Cita bersatu dalam keberagaman, saling berbagi ilmu, menuju pribadi tanggung berharga mulia untuk bumi bersada. Melangkah maju, berubah dunia, cipta daya kreasi, takkan berhenti berkarya mengabdi. Some. 
Rafi, itu mute. Ya, bisa sekarang, Pak. Ya, can you hear me now, Prof? Ya, oke. Okay. Ya, selamat siang. Namaste. A very good afternoon to all of you all. Nama saya Rafi Makhija, promoter of Indian education in Indonesia, and also will be your moderator for today's session with the topic Delivery Education Online International Best Practices. Um, Bapak Ibu, for today's session, uh, please allow me to use Bahasa Gado Gado, Bahasa Inggris sama Bahasa Indonesia. Uh, karena saya sendiri udah 20 tahun tinggal di uh, Indonesia. And uh, kalau ada salah-salah waktu pembicaraan saya, saya minta maaf ya Bapak Ibu. Karena kalau udah minta maaf, kalau bikin salah nggak apa-apa ya Bapak Ibu. Jadi terima kasih untuk sebelumnya. Uh, selamat datang ke peserta-peserta, participants yang hadir dari Uh, uh, yang, acara, uh, yang hadir acara ini very happy, senang sekali untuk bilangin untuk acara ini kita ada participants from 33, 33 provinces of Indonesia from all over from Aceh to Papua it's only Kalimantan yang masih belum hadir and also Bapak Ibu kita ada participants from India, France Morocco, Turkey with a total participants of almost 700 Selamat datang Prof Zainal Hasibuan, uh, Ketua uh, Aptikom, and also one of the prominent speakers for today. Welcome Prof. Also please allow me to welcome Professor Vikram, one of our prominent speakers from India. Uh, welcome Prof uh, Vikram. And also kita uh, would like to welcome our team Aptikom, the team webinar, and all our friends of Aptikom from Indonesia. Uh, Bapak Ibu yang kita hormati, let me share a brief background about how this event came into existence with the topic Delivering Education Online International Best Practices, Bapak Ibu. Sebelumnya tahun ini, yang tanggal 9 sampai tanggal 15 Februari tahun 2020, Bapak Ibu, Aptikom, a team of Aptikom of 30 delegates led by Professor Zainal Hasibuan, as a president of Aptikom, visited India. And waktu ada kunjungan ke India, the delegation visited two cities of India, which was Chennai and Bangalore. And during the visit, uh, objective vi visit adalah caranya gimana kita explore collaborative links antara India dan Indonesia. So during the visit, the team visited five universities and signed four MOUs. Uh, dengan Universitas Universitas India. Itu adalah Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology uh, dari Chennai, uh, SRM Institute of Science and Technology from Chennai, Acharya Institutes from Bangalore, uh, Nite Minakshi Institute of Technology from Bangalore. Uh, Bapak Ibu, yang hari ini, yang uh, topik, yang acara yang ini is one of the implementation uh, out of the visit of Aptikom to India. And that's why today's topic untuk acara ini adalah joint, one of the first uh, joint international webinar series with the topic, uh, Delivering Education Online International Best Practices. Uh, sebelum kita mulai acara ini, Bapak Ibu, uh, may I request all the participants to please mute your microphones. Uh, jadi presentasi ini bisa lancar, can go uninterrupted. Also, kalau Bapak Ibu, if you'll have any questions, kalau ada pertanyaan, please share your questions on the Uh, live chat box, and uh, we'll be very happy to ask the questions to the speakers. So before we start the session, Bapa Ibu, uh, please allow me to give you a brief uh, profile uh, of Professor Vikram. Uh, Prof. Vikram uh, is an alumnus of IM Calcutta, currently working as Deputy Director, Acharya Technology and Business Incubation, and also a senior faculty member at Acharya School of Management, Bangalore a PhD in finance, loves connecting with people um, around the world, brings in decades uh, plus of rich corporate uh, experience from multinational companies like Standard Chartered, Bank, Kotak Securities, and many others. Areas of interest of Prof. Vikram uh, is finance, business, strategy, designing businesses and revenue models, and also teaching learning methods. Uh, Professor Vikram has been to Indonesia. Jadi, Bapak Ibu, Prof. Vikram is not new to Indonesia. He has been to Indonesia uh, last year. 
uh, and loves Indonesia and also the people of Indonesia for their hospitality. Um, so may I now request uh, Professor Vikram uh, to please uh, deliver his presentation. Uh, Prof Vikram, the screen is yours. Thank you, Ms. Ravi. Uh, in fact, I'm very happy to interact with all of you. Uh, as uh, you know, Pa Ravi rightly said, Indonesia is one country which I really love traveling. In fact, I've uh, been there twice. Uh, I enjoy uh, you know, uh, the company of uh, Indonesian people. Uh, quickly, let me start my uh, session today. Uh, sir, is my screen visible? Yes, sir. It's visible, sir. All right. Okay. Uh, as you all know, today's session is uh, delivering education online, international best practices. Uh, what I would be uh, discussing in this uh, brief session is uh, various methods and tools and techniques that we as teachers uh, can use to uh, make our education effective and reach out to students. Uh, thanks to, uh, th there are a lot of research, uh, thanks to all the researchers uh, who have done tremendous amount of work in helping us understand what can be an effective teaching learning methodology when it comes to online. Definitely COVID also brings in an opportunity for all of us, for all the teachers to go online uh, in the sense in a traditional classroom, we generally can only reach up to certain level of students. I can have a maximum 60 or 100 students in my class. But what happens online is you can have students across the world and you can teach them and they can be your students. So definitely this is an opportunity. So let us now try and understand uh, how we can use uh, you know, online as a platform and deliver education very effectively. I'm glad to share my thoughts with all of you and also to learn from each one of you uh, during the course of this webinar. To start with, uh, let me first, uh, uh, you know, try to understand or explain my thoughts on uh, the difference between traditional classroom uh, based education and online education. So here it is. So let me go uh, point by point. Uh, the comparison between a traditional classroom and online education. What happens in a traditional classroom is it is generally proximity based knowledge transfer in the sense the student and the teacher, they are together. They are physically together. They come to a classroom. So the knowledge transfer happens in the classroom. Now the focus here is the traditional classroom is only knowledge transfer, right? The knowledge gets transferred from the faculty member to the students or maybe uh, from one student to another student. So the focus here is only knowledge transfer. But online, that is not the primary focus. The focus when you are uh, doing an online class is the discovery and construction of knowledge. Discovery and construction of knowledge. It means online as a platform helps a teacher to enable discovery of knowledge and to enable construction of knowledge. So it is not only about transferring the knowledge. It is not only about the faculty member comes to classroom, gives one hour lecture and goes out. So the opportunities for you to bring in variety uh, of things into an online classroom is very high. Now the second point, uh, the role of a teacher, the role of a faculty or a teacher is simply to be a lecturer when he is in a traditional classroom, right? He's a lecturer, he comes to the classroom, teaches and leaves, right? Online, you cannot simply be a lecturer. You have to, your role is bigger. So you have to be a student success manager. You have to be a manager who manages the experience of the students. And more importantly, you are somebody who is an instructional designer. So as you can see, the role of a teacher is getting bigger and wider. So there's a larger scope now where you are, you as a teacher, is you can now be an instructional designer or you can be a student success manager. So that is very much uh, important and very interesting for me. Now the third point, what happens in a traditional classroom kind of setup is the major focus is always on assessment. If the student did well in the exam, then I may say, okay, the teacher taught them well. 
if most of the students in the classroom did not do well or score well in the exam then i may say no the teacher did not teach well so the whole so you know whole purpose of a traditional classroom is to uh, assess students based on their performance in a traditional examination kind of system that uh, we may uh, debate and uh, kind of bring in new elements here but uh, examination is not the only matrix for us to measure the performance of the student or the teacher so what happens when you are teaching online is the key metrics here is impactful engagement now students would definitely you know try and understand or see if the teacher is engaging them impactfully point 1 point 2 they would also look for skill delivery which will enhance their employability so this becomes your key metrics for assessment when you are teaching online so when you are teaching online the importance of traditional examination is gone so here you will have to engage your students as your audience if you do not engage them if i don't engage them uh, my students may not be with me they may get disconnected right so the key metrics also changes now the fourth point here i have mentioned byob byob means bring your own books okay uh, in a traditional classroom the student brings in his own book or study material or notes whatever and uh, learning happens through the the capturing of learning happens through those materials right but online it is byod in the sense bring your own device so each student naturally will be online using his laptop so what i meant to say here is each student is a walking computer lab for you as a teacher you can use the lab the way you want it to effectively engage the students and teach him a lot of skills this cannot happen when a student is sitting in the classroom only with books so when you have a student with laptop you can come out with different ideas and strategies to leverage the uh, you know uh, the laptop or uh, use it like a computer lab for each student and then deliver your education in a much more effective way to increase the employability of the students right so byob versus byod uh, advantage with one small advantage with traditional classroom is peer learning is automated what is peer learning peer learning is i look at my teacher i am a student i look at my teacher and i learn from him i look at my friend who is sitting next to me or in my class i look at him and i learn from him my friend learns from me so this is peer learning in a traditional physical classroom peer learning is automated right uh, one student looks at another student and he learns so the learning is shared right but online because students are uh, online being a distributed model students are sitting in different places you know in the comfort of their home you cannot they cannot learn by looking at others right on their computer screen so here the challenge for the faculty is to uh, trigger it tactfully such that you engage one student with another student to ensure peer learning is happening because peer learning is an important component in le teaching learning methods okay so you as a teacher need to trigger peer learning now the sixth point Uh, body language when you are in a traditional classroom your students can see you physically live and they observe knowingly or unknowingly they are observing your body language that cannot happen in an online session right uh, what you can do instead is you can use voice modulation you can vary your voice and then you can use visualizations to make sure your uh, delivery is very effective so that is the difference when it comes to traditional classroom and online the last one is performance metrics and analysis is a challenge how do i know me as a teacher how do i know that my students are learning or my students are having any difficulties or challenges in learning that may not always be possible or very effectively possible in a traditional classroom but what happens in an online classroom is learning analytics report you know you can use data science which can Uh, you know give you a dashboard right uh, in in we do this by uh, when we use acharya live as a platform what happens in, in the live platform is that you know for each student there is a dashboard you have a dashboard where you can click on the name of the student and see what are his challenges 
where in which areas he is doing good in which areas he is weak all the you know set of information uh, which is driven by data science is available to you as a teacher so today what i do is if i want to understand uh, how my students are performing or what challenges they are facing all i do is i go to acharya live platform log in and then click on the student name i get a dashboard there are colorful graphs i can see which student what challenges uh, he is facing and how i can address them so that that is very much important in the futuristic education because uh, you as a teacher should uh, we as teachers should know how to leverage technology that is the most important thing here so that can be done online and uh, we at acharya have successfully experimented this uh, and uh, the results are fantastic now we're going ahead uh, let us now understand uh, what are some of the key components of an effective uh, e learning or online learning let me ask you a simple question if today they they say there is an advertisement which says uh, we will teach you swimming but it is completely online will we go for that course i don't think so i don't want to join any course because i'm very much scared to join an online swimming course uh, which where you know I, i watch a video and then learn how to swim that is not possible i get scared is it not so what are some of the things which can make uh, education online very effective three components trust trust when i say the student should trust you as a teacher so you need to make sure that your students trust you trust is a critical factor if they don't trust you then they may not uh, think that you are an effective teacher and they may not learn from you so you need to build trust with your students and how do we do it using online i'll explain in some of my next slides second question is rapport uh, the student should have a very good rapport with you you need to have very good rapport with students now how do we do this it means you have to go beyond your syllabus and then help students in different things for example you may tell them which companies are hiring now what are the key skills that are required for this profile suppose let us say amazon or gojek or uh, grab in indonesia if the company is hiring now you as a teacher should take go to their website download the job description or recruitment advertisement read it communicate this to your students and tell them one two three these three things are uh, the key skills that this company is looking for so when you do all these things beyond your syllabus definitely students will have between you and students you will have a very good rapport now the last point tangibility uh, in a traditional classroom it so happens that everything is uh, visible there is tangible evidence there is a classroom there is a board there is a physical teacher so uh, uh, you know human brains trust whatever is tangible so uh, the challenge in online is nothing is tangible right uh, i may be uh, from a very good very big university but the student is sitting in front of a laptop and uh, he doesn't care you know how big your university is so how do we build tangibility it means you have to give lot of other materials for the student in the sense the study material uh, the recommended books the notes the 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 uh, you know um, on uh, the models in excel file so many things you will have to give such that the student understands and starts believing you now uh, going ahead uh, there is some uh, a little bit of technical things i would like to discuss with all of you so when a teacher is teaching online uh, we will have to understand what is the instructional uh, design model okay now what is instructional design a uh, instructional design is a set of uh you know design or a policy framework as to how to teach effectively now uh, fortunately for us there are a lot of researchers in the past uh, who have done a great job in uh, doing uh, research to improve quality of education i have listed around 6 to 7 of those models uh, instructional design models idm we call it as idm instructional design models the first one is situated cognition model okay what this model says is knowing and doing cannot be separated it says there has to be a very very strong marriage between theory and practice we as teachers cannot go to a classroom simply cover a concept and come out you have to show them how that can be applied okay so that is what this model says i i'll keep everything brief here because 
these are uh, you know very big models now the second model is socio cultural learning what happens in this model is what this model proposes is that uh, you as a teacher should know your the background of your students uh, from where they come from their family their culture uh, their lifestyle you as a teacher should understand these things before you start delivering your sessions right so when you are trying to teach something online uh, let us all as teachers make sure that we understand our students in detail right their family their culture their lifestyle their likes and their dislikes you need to know a lot of these things because once you know this you can easily you know trigger peer learning strategies right you can connect one student in the classroom to another in the same classroom and then make sure students learn uh, and they learn effectively the third model is edi model uh, what edi model says is analyze design develop implement and evaluate okay so something close to bloom's taxonomy uh, this model also tells us to analyze things first design develop your material implement and then evaluate your teaching learning method the another model is called david merrill's model david merrill's model i will uh, explain to you in detail in my next slide uh, moving on there is another model called individualized instruction model where uh, the the primary uh, benchmark is if your learning method is so good uh, then it means you have to make sure that your students or learners should know how to complete a task autonomously uh, that means independently on their own right so that is the end goal there is no other benchmark this model says the end goal is find out if students can do uh, what you taught if they can do everything on their own if they can do everything on their own then it means your teaching learning method was good if no then it needs to be improved uh, there is another model called sam model Uh, what sam model uh, tells us is it says do not stick to any uh, instructional design model keep experimenting uh, go for multiple iterations and whatever works for you uh, is a good model for you now i will spend some time on this model which is called david murrill's uh, model uh, professor dr david murrill proposed a model which i believe uh, is a very good model for us to apply when we are teaching online what uh, dr david says is he says the first step is to make sure that you demonstrate in the sense uh, dr david says do not start to teach something directly he says first prepare the students and make them face a real world problem give a real world challenge to a student let him do that for example let us say you are teaching you want to teach uh, you know thermodynamics or some concepts from physics chemistry or biology whatever do not go to a classroom or do not start an online session and say hey look today i am uh, teaching thermodynamics he says don't do that instead give students a practical problem tell them this is the real problem this company is facing this problem can you solve this let the student try to solve the problem so when the two student tries you know tries to solve the problem the student will now understand that it is very difficult to solve the problem that is where the teacher comes in so step 1 is to make students face a real world problem now step 2 what dr david murrill proposes is activation of previous knowledge now once the student has already you know faced a real world problem now tell the student you as a teacher hint to the student that uh, to tell you know make sure that students use their previous knowledge which could be uh, previous knowledge from the same subject or it could be interdisciplinary previous knowledge from different subjects right now you as a teacher will hint students to use previous knowledge to solve the problem which they face in step 1 okay now when step 2 is done now the faculty or the teacher will say can you apply that concept here that is step 3 step 4 is integration into real world challenges now the teacher will say okay you understood you faced a problem you understood what is the problem 
then you used the previous knowledge to solve the problem. The third step, you try to apply that to solve it. Now the teacher will say, let us integrate and see how we can uh, test whether what we tried really solves the real problem or it is not solving the problem. Now this mechanism of learning also involves as a step four that you scaffold to the problem progression. It means the teacher will select a small problem first, then you know, increase the complexity of problem slowly. So, so there is no teaching at all. This model doesn't propose that we have to go to classroom and teach. This model says, be an instructional designer, be a student success manager, facilitate learning by following these five steps. So in the end, the teacher will simply connect some concepts and say, this is the learning. So this is one of the most effective model is what I believe in my opinion and which can uh, easily be implemented when you are teaching online. Acharya Live as a platform, we have kind of used this model uh, as, a, uh, as a base to build the entire platform. Now, another important component for, uh, some, uh, for a teacher who is teaching online is to understand and uh, profile each student. Suppose, let us say I have 100 students in my class. Now, each student is a different student. Each student learns very differently. We all are different from each other. Now, me as a teacher, I should know what kind of student he or she is. It means I have to profile my student. There are different kinds of students. Uh, what I do in my classes, I profile them. I label them, right? Uh, this student, this is the profile. Now, why do I profile or label them? Because it helps me use some of the teaching learning strategies to effectively engage and help students learn fast and effectively. Now, let us understand what are different types of teachers, uh, students, I'm sorry. The first set of students are, there are some students who are enablers. Uh, what do I mean when I say enablers? These are the students who can help you enable effective learning in the classroom, right? You have some students who can, whom you can trust and they'll quickly enable such that everybody will start learning from them. Okay. So they are called enablers. So any new thing you want to try, you try with these people first because they are ready to take it. Now there are some students who are your ambassadors. Okay. Uh, they go around the campus. They go around meeting all their friends and they keep saying, this teacher is a very good teacher. Uh, she teaches well. So they are your brand ambassadors. So you should know how to leverage on them. And then we have some students whom I call the alpha uh, means they are very aggressive. They are very strong. They are very, uh, you know, they're, they're very aggressive students. Okay. So you have to be very tactful and careful with them. Uh, they are good students. All these are good students. They are all students are very good students, but they are different type, different variety. So when you are dealing with alpha, you have to be careful. You have to be tactful because they are very aggressive in nature. So you need to know how to uh, manage your relationship with them. Then uh, in your class, there are some students who are called opinion leaders. I think you all have experienced this. Uh, opinion leaders are some students. If they say something, the entire class will follow the same. Right? Good or bad. They can influence other students. They say something, everybody in the class will say, yes, this is right. So you need to be very careful you need to be very tactful when you are dealing with opinion leaders because what they say in the class matters a lot. And then you have attention seekers. There are some students who keep on uh, seeking attention from everybody. Uh, they want the attention always from their teachers. They want attention from their uh, classmates in the class. So they keep you know, seeking attention. So you need to know, okay, this student is attention seeker. Me as a teacher, how do I deal with them? Now there are cross learners. What, what do you mean by cross learners? Suppose let us say uh, there are some students who are good at singing or dancing. Uh, what happens with these students is they copy paste the learning as a template from uh, singing or dancing and they try to apply it in your class. It means they always try to learn uh, the, in the same way how they learned in singing or dancing. Because when you are learning singing or dancing, there is a learning mechanism, there's a learning style. What this student does is 
he copies the template and he uses that template everywhere to learn it's a fantastic set of audience very easy to teach them they are quick learners so you have to know if somebody is trying to learn i i had a student uh, who was very much good in cricket cricket is a game in india uh, he will always you uh, know use the learnings from cricket in the classroom so it's good it's fantastic so you can uh, go with them and you will be happy teaching such students and now there is another set of students whom i call as leaders and laggers what happens is uh, first let me explain uh, who are laggers laggers are set of students where they are always little bit uh, you know slow right it's it's good it's not a problem but uh, compared to the uh, class they may be little bit uh, you know slow uh, for example you are let us say you are teaching something and you just finished your class a student may raise his hand and say ma'am i did not understand sir i did not understand what you taught in the last class so they are laggards they lag behind everything so you need to know and you need to profile them and say so that you can give some personal attention to these students and you can develop them the role of a teacher is to help students now there are some students who lead who always lead uh, in the sense the teacher is teaching something the student will not allow the teacher to complete he will raise his hand and he will complete the sentence or you are trying to solve a problem he will solve very quickly and he will say this is the answer he won't allow the teacher to complete so this again you need to know how to manage such audience and there are some students who are sportive uh, sportive when i say uh, if you give them a critical feedback they are okay they take it very uh, sportively they do not uh, get offended but at times you may have students who are alpha and if you give critical feedback to them they may slightly get offended so that's again one more set of students and then you have uh, another set of students some students we call them as clingers uh, clingers when i say these are the students who keep asking for help and support from teachers for everything small and big example the student may raise his hand and say uh, boo my pen is not working and next he may say boo i don't have a paper or then he may say pa i forgot my notebook today so for everything and anything the student keeps asking support okay so that at times can disturb the flow of the class but uh, if you can profile them what will happen is you can call those students well in advance and counsel them in such a way that they are always prepared for the class and they do not disturb the teacher when the teacher is teaching okay now uh, the next set of students uh, as i call is visual or auditory there are some students who can learn if the visuals are very good and rich because their brain is designed such a way that uh, whatever they see they capture it okay so these are visual learners and i have some more students who can learn only what they uh, listen to so they are auditory right they listen something and they learn quickly the last set of students uh, they, their style is kinesthetic in the sense for them touch and feel is very much important so what do we do as teachers you give them some projects you give them some field works so these students learn quickly if they do something touch and feel remember now these are some of the uh, different styles of students and their learning styles uh, what we do on acharya live is we have enabled all these categories of students so when a new student joins you can use this platform acharya live and you can label the student or profile the student and then you know how to deal with students now in the dashboard it shows Uh, what percentage of students you have in these categories so accordingly a teacher can fine tune his delivery method when he is teaching online one word of caution from my side is when you are diagnosing students with these categories you as a teacher should be very careful not to do wrong diagnosis right suppose somebody is alpha and then you label him as attention seeker or you label him as clinger that can be uh, very risky right or somebody uh, some student is lagging behind but you label him as cross learner then the learning may not be effective so it means you as a teacher should know how to label these people and you can do that easily on our platform acharya live i do it on acharya live so having said that let me move on uh, now an interesting question i always ask myself uh, 
we as teachers we always try to grab the attention of the students but think for a minute most of the students spend a lot of time on social media platform they are on instagram they are on facebook so many other platforms tiktok uh, these days they spend a lot of time on these platforms but uh, when we say there is some teaching learning happening uh, they may become a bit cold they may go a bit cold right why does that happen why how can social media attract the young pool and why how we as teachers can learn those tricks now these are some of the uh, reasons why students get attracted towards uh, you know social media social currency right so it means uh, facebook offers something which is very interesting and not only interesting it also helps people to share it with others we all want to look smart we all want to look intelligent when we are in a group right so we we always try to say something some stories or something to others such that they listen to you they get attracted and they start thinking that you are very smart so that is called social currency uh, for example if i tell you that an ant can lift the weight of another 50 ants that becomes very uh, you know some people will say well, how is that possible you will start thinking about it and maybe you will start sharing with somebody else right but the reason is why do we share lot many things on whatsapp whatever we receive we tend to forward it to others the logic the psychological reason behind this is social currency we want to look smart we want to look intelligent when we are in a group so you as a teacher should also use this in your classroom now the second point people share content to relate to others if i say uh, this happened to your friend everybody will listen to my to me and they'll try to understand what happened right so your your delivery cannot be very abstract you have to relate it to students you have to say one of your senior in the class your super senior got a job in this company this was the highest salary package and the reason why he got the job is 1 2 3 when you say this everybody will listen to you and of course you need to use colorful visualization and audio rich uh, the, your content when you are teaching online should be audio rich it has to have very colorful visualizations uh, plain boring four points students may not be interested at all right and uh, content variation uh, you know change in medium of instruction sometimes i speak sometimes i allow other students to speak sometimes i show a video uh, sometimes i bring in uh, another uh, website and then i show them something keep on changing the medium of instruction such that the student uh, you know stay connected and they are with you always the last one is fomo fomo stands for fear of missing out right if there is a great story happening if there is something which is going viral which if, if there is something which is very funny i don't want to miss it right i always want to know what is happening so that i don't look like an idiot when i am uh, with my friends so i have this fear of missing out so it means you create something in the class such that students will always come you know come back to you and say i don't want to miss this class right so these are some of the components psychological factors which are used by facebook and instagram when they are teaching on uh, when when they engage the students on right now few thoughts from my side uh, what worked for me i would like to share my experience when you are teaching online one thing we have to understand is we need to engage students very effectively in the sense if i have a class tomorrow morning at 10 am right if i have a class tomorrow morning at 10 am it means i have to engage my students much before the class i cannot start my online class and then try to engage them that will not happen that is not an effective way of doing what i should do is maybe one day before or maybe one week before i need to engage my audience because this is an online class right now when you start a session start your session with an empowerment statement so uh, you as a teacher me as a teacher i have to make an empowerment statement for example i may say today i will teach you an important technique on how to analyze a company in just 3 minutes how to analyze a company in just 3 minutes when you say this with a time factor in it every student will get 
very much interested in what you want to say right or you may say today i will teach you how nasa builds a rocket so instead of saying i will teach you basics of gravity don't say that because students will think i, I can read it on i can read it uh, from many books or i can uh, watch some youtube videos and learn right don't say that instead you say i will teach you how nasa uses a technology to uh, you know launch rockets successfully make this empowerment statement and then go back to your basic concepts so that connects students and they will listen to you effectively create mystery i later show you uh, how to create mystery uh, storytelling versus story showing i'll talk about it slightly later now this one is important audio visual conflict now imagine you are a student you are sitting in the class and the faculty is showing something on the screen and then he is talking like what i am doing now i don't do this with my students but uh, you are all uh, my te you know uh, uh, teachers here so i thought i'll give you a demo effect uh, what happens is if if you are asking students to look at something and then at the same time listen to you the brain is not designed to do both the things together especially the male brains female brains can multitask but uh, male uh, you know men cannot multitask boys cannot multitask that that's a research driven what happens is the mind gets confusion right gets into a confusion should i listen or should i see right so what you can do is you can avoid audio visual conflict so uh, what i am doing now is to show you audio visual conflict you know how to avoid see i am putting says statements one by one i'm going slow and then i explain right so you will have to use this trick when you are using when you are teaching online 30 minute magic show versus 3 hour magic show we all love magic shows is it not but if the same magic show runs for 3 hours 4 hours 5 hours uh, we may not be interested right so it means you as a teacher when you are engaging students for 1 hour 20 to 30 minutes is what you need to uh, you know pitch in and present something rest all is a drama right rest all is how you engage the audience one full hour if you do lecturing nobody would listen right use voice modulation increase your voice whenever it is required reduce it whenever it is required change the style of the tone uh, i'm not great at this i i i, I find it very difficult but research says uh, voice modulation is critical when you are teaching online uh, use colorful slides make it very professional use uh, images graphs show videos students will love add interactive powerpoints i'll show you uh, slightly in my next slide you can use video case study and there are a lot of cool software tools uh, like acharya live which you can use to enhance your academic delivery when you are teaching online the last point is when you are teaching online uh in my opinion we should not uh, you know focus too much on examination because the moment i talk about exam that adds a lot of stress on the student's mind so he may get disconnected so when you are teaching online uh, do not make it uh, uh, such that let us not make it such that that whole purpose of learning is only exam the whole purpose here should be the joy of learning the sheer thrill of understanding something is much more important now uh, uh, this is the uh, technique called the syllabus mapping for example uh, i am a teacher and this is my lesson plan i want to teach my students these things i want to teach them what is regression i want to teach them maybe a little bit of python i want to teach them time series data so this is my lesson plan what i do in my classroom is i do not go to my classroom and say i want to teach you these 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 things right the thing is students may not listen to me at all even if they listen that may not be there in their mind uh, effectively and for uh, a longer period of time instead what i do is i say there is this company called amazon they want to hire a, a, a you know somebody for their junior data scientist role uh, this is the qualification this is the location and this is the salary that they are ready to give and i say this is the job description i show them this job job description right i say this is the company hiring this is the position this is the salary and uh, they are looking for someone who can do all these things this is the job description slowly then i say look 
I have taken some of the key words from the job description and I've prepared my lesson plan. So what happens when you do this as a teacher is the students, uh, your students will be very much attracted and be interested in your classroom because here it is about the student, not you. The students will start believing you because you will think, okay, if I attend his class, this teacher's class, then I may be able to learn these things and apply for a job in Amazon. So that, that way you can map your syllabus to job description, communicate to students well in advance. Remember I told you, engage students before you take a session. So send them this job description one week before you engage their class. And in the class you say, I want to teach this. What we teachers generally do is, we share the syllabus, we share this first. The student doesn't care because he is not he has not understood where this will be used. So instead, do not share your syllabus, share this first. Really works. For me, it has worked. Uh, students pay a lot of attention when I uh, do such sessions. Interactive PPT, I said. So this is the timeline, time uh, limit which is running. Before it closes here, a student has to make a decision, right? Okay, this helps students to... Uh, you know, for you to engage them effectively because this is from the gaming mechanics, mechanics, right? It's a game mechanics where you use the components of gaming, gaming in your class. Same happens here. There's a time bar. The student has to select this option or that option. And when he selects, you take the student into that particular story. So you can build all these things in Acharya Live. This is primarily built on Acharya Live as a platform. And we have integrated these things so that you can engage the student. When the time is running, uh, it adds some kind of, uh, you know, the component of thrill is added and then students get excited when they go through all these things. Now, as I've already mentioned, uh, do not uh, put too much pressure on students in terms of examination, right? It, it really, uh, you know, uh, drains the student and takes away his learning bandwidth and he may not be able to enjoy your classes. At least when we are teaching online, let us not focus too much on exams because the student is here to have fun, is here to enjoy his life in a right and positive way. And we as teachers should make sure that his employability skills are good and then he gets a job or starts his own business and he's successful in his life. That is our primary responsibility. So that is the thing. Now, as I said, create mystery in one of my class, uh, in the uh, one week before I just shared this, I said, uh, this class is not for everyone. Only adults can attend this class. Everybody started getting uh, you know, confused. Uh, most of the students started asking me, sir, what is that you will be teaching? So when you can create mystery, you can you know, grab their attention and everybody will come with the curious mind to attend your session. And when you teach something, they really like it. They really enjoy. So uh, you can create mystery like this. Now, a little bit on uh, instructional design uh, as a model, okay? So when you are teaching online, these are the three elements of teaching learning. The first one is called staging. Uh, what happens in a staging uh, level is, you as a teacher, you're setting the stage for the classroom, okay? Uh, for one hour classroom, this you'll have to be doing for 15 minutes. The first 15 minutes or maybe a previous class also, you set the stage for you to you know, teach something and for students to learn something. So staging is step one. Uh, what we can do is there's something called as flip class where the faculty can record a short video and send it to students uh, the previous week or previous night. The student goes through the video and is already ready to the class. He comes to class, you discuss key things, you discuss examples or you solve a case study, you're done. So it, it can be a very effective uh, way of teaching. Flipped classroom is very popular in India and abroad. Uh, you also have an option to have a short audio notes. You can do a podcast. You can do flashcards. Uh, there are multiple methods, right? Uh, all these are done using, uh, I do it using Acharya Live. The second stage of learning. Uh, remember, first 15 minutes in the class, you did this. Next 15 minutes, you are going to trigger Right? What do you trigger? You start the trigger by revising what you have taught earlier. You know, give orientation. Uh, orientation when I say 
prepare students in such that they are all oriented towards what you are trying to teach prepare their mind trigger brainstorm let there be a debate in the classroom you question students and then let students question you also make one student to question another student in the classroom so the whole class is very live active and they are discussing right the last point is deep dive and reinforce you use these tools you can go for voice modulation video or digital content you can show live poll uh, for example uh, let us say uh, there is a new business policy in indonesia you can start a live poll in your classroom and ask your students how many of you agree with what the uh, prime minister is saying or you can ask how many of uh, the students uh, do not agree right so there is a live poll where you can use the yes or no buttons and uh, you can ask students to vote you can uh, structure a question ask students to vote so uh, that makes every student think that he belongs to this class so he is very active right uh, prof ikram sorry last 5 minutes prof thank you yeah, yeah i am done thank you so you can also do teach back sessions uh, multi board annotation in the sense you can write something on the board you can allow students to write something on the screen so that it is visible to everybody so these are some of the things which uh, you know we you i use on uh, acharya live where i can write something on my screen students also can run something on the screen right so quickly this is the difference between a live and other platforms uh, the primary difference is zoom google meet microsoft or whatever these are made for uh, business meetings and not for academic purpose but acharya live is always made for made by academicians for academicians so it's a full fledged lms and this is a meeting app and these are some of the uh, features very important features which we have in acharya live your zoom google meet or these platforms do not have such of these uh, features which are very much important for a teacher for example student profile attendance marking right the attendance capturing is automatic because otherwise i'll spend 5 10 minutes wasting my time uh, to mark attendance time table is always always there ready right uh, more importantly analytics report and dashboard for each student is always available for you as a teacher so uh, this is my uh, short presentation i i just wanted to share my thoughts with all of you uh, with this i end my session uh, thank you very much for uh, giving me an opportunity to present my thoughts with all of you thank you thank you so much prof vikram uh, thank you for your very interesting uh, uh, presentation um, I, there was one query regarding the features of a live platform which i think you already covered so thank you so much for that uh, thank you prof for that uh, question uh, also just to inform everyone that we have almost touched 1000 participants so it's it's nice to reach across the whole of uh, indonesia as well as the other parts of the world uh, also ya pasarta pasarta ya tolong kita minta bapak ibu please share the apticom uh, tv channel on the youtube um, uh, please please do uh, like and also share it thank you uh now let's move on uh, to the second session for today's uh, presentation uh, please allow me to give a brief profile of uh, professor zainal hasibuan who is the president of apicon uh, prof zainal uh, has done his high school and diploma from west fargo usa in the year 1980 uh, and then prof has completed his bachelor's in 1986 from uh, ipb which is institute pertanian Bogor from Indonesia, and then uh, Prof has done his Masters MLS from Indiana University in the US in 1989, and in 1995, uh, Prof has done his PhD uh, from Indiana University in US also. Uh, Prof Zainal, I know him personally. I mean, probably for the past uh, four months or five months. Mungkin bapa ibu bisa disampaikan Prof Zainal is a very kind, very humble person. and uh, papa uh, sibuk sekali tapi walaupun sibuk selalu ada waktunya untuk guide and advice so thank you prof uh, so without further uh, ado may i now request prof zainal uh, to please deliver his presentation the screen is yours prof terima kasih okay first of all i would like to greet uh, professor fikrams thank you for your uh, presentations it's really uh and let us to 
uh, strengthening our motivation to go online. Uh, even though we were expecting uh, uh, to have a, a live demo of the uh, virtual classroom that you have, maybe we can arrange it uh, some other times. Definitely. Yeah, hopefully. Um, and beside that also, you already uh, present some features of the virtual classroom that you have. It is very uh, interesting. I think uh, for sure that it will be uh, one of the topic in Apticom later on. We will discuss further uh, how we gotta uh, improve our uh, online learning so far beside all the technology uh, and capacity that uh, we have so far. And also, uh, we also would like to have a, a strengthening, uh, to strengthening our uh, collaborations uh, since uh, we went to Acharya uh, last February, just about the COVID just started, I think. Yeah, uh, we spent, I think, four or three to four hours in the airport, you know, uh, got uh, checked up. Uh, but thanks God, all of us uh, can come back uh, safely to Indonesia. Okay. And now we are facing the COVID and here we go, you know, we meet uh, through online. Uh, and again, you know, to all my Apticops fellow uh, in joining in YouTube, uh, please uh, do not hesitate to post a questions or suggestions uh, because uh, not all of us uh, was able to go to India at the times, but uh, a lot of uh, things uh, were listed uh, and also become a potential for us to uh, uh, explore more uh, about our uh, collaborations, uh, especially our uh, Ministry of Education just uh, establish a uh, new policies. They call it uh, uh, Belajar Merdeka, freedom of learning and freedom of uh, campus. So it seems that, you know, so far we have uh, uh, not really uh, uh, relaxed in studying or in campus. So uh, what they have uh, in that policy is to encourage us to uh, uh, establish collaboration, not only among institutions in Indonesia, but also abroad, especially India. So again, uh, thank you, Prof. Pikrams. Hopefully this is our first engagement and we can uh, also do it again some uh, in the futures, in futures through Mr. Rafi, uh, also is very active in connecting Indonesia and India, especially Apticoms. Apticoms are big associations. It's around, uh, if it is uh, uh, institutions, it's around 1,500 institutions, higher edu education institution. When it comes to the study programs, it's almost 2,000 uh, study programs. So with a, a wide range of uh, quality for sure. And we in Apticom, uh, which is the association in uh, uh, computers and informatics uh, would like to be a locomotive of all of these uh, uh, study program to uh, improve our quality of education. So I have a, a little uh, presentations just to show you all. I think, um, okay. Oke, okay, bisa bisa lihat ya semuanya. So, uh, this is what I would like to share with uh, my fellows uh, from uh, Vikram as well as my fellows from Indonesia, from Papua to Aceh. They are present in the through YouTube. Uh, we would like to share what we have done so far in order delivering education online, and I hope. Uh, from this presentation, all of us can get a uh, insight, you know, where we are and also where are the things need to be uh, strengthening, especially with a virtual classroom that just uh, Prof. Vikram show us uh, with uh, very fantastic features. Uh, and hopefully uh, we someday uh, can test it there 
the applications um, used to, to deliver our online class, especially in this coming semester on August or September. Uh, this is the agenda that I would like to share, uh, motivation responsive to change, current states of online education, development and future selection and conclusion. Uh, we cannot deny that uh, revolution, industrial mm -hmm. revolutions will go on until we uh, reach a, what they call a society 5.0, uh, where the technology play the main role. So in order to catch up with all these uh, technology advancements, uh, we have uh, to develop our capacity and we have to uh, also uh, cope with all the uh, technology advancements. Otherwise, we will uh, left behind. And secondly, this is a, a, a COVID-19 that uh, trigger radical change, uh, not only in the consumer sites, but also in the producer sites. Uh, when it comes to uh, education, uh, there's also education provider, as well as the uh, education consumer, which is the, our students. So we, uh, with the COVID, uh, we try to think positively. We have to respond positively that uh, it's strengthening the situation that we live in the global village and we are connected to each other. Uh, I would like to quote uh, what Charles Darwin has said in 1884. Uh, it is not the strongest of the species that can survive, nor the most intelligent. So we don't have to be uh, very, very smart. And we also don't have to be very, very uh, muscle up uh, that can survive. But it is the one that most responsive to change. That's the one that can survive. So uh, higher education institution right now uh, uh, facing uh, problems, it is going to perish or flourish due to this uh, COVID uh, before that due to the revolutionary industry 4.0. So uh, our uh, webinar today, it's uh, in line with that, you know, we have to respond uh, all this changing uh, so that we can uh, uh, flourish, yeah? not perish. Perish, it means, you know, you're distinct from the earth. Okay. Uh, Okay, uh, what has been done so far? I think I quote from Barack Obama, 2009, change we can believe in. I, I love that, uh, that, that quote, yeah. Uh, and then our uh, new Minister of Education established the policies, what they, he called it, uh, Merdeka Belajar and Campus Merdeka, learning freedom and freedom of campus. This right before COVID, so when the COVID come, you know, it's just like uh, what you call that, something that you're waiting for, you know, so it's there. So we have to anticipate COVID after mass, you know, what we will do after the COVID. Uh, distance education will be permanent. That's what just the minister said uh, yesterday. I think it's very encouraging. So uh, it doesn't mean that our traditional education will be replaced. But instead, you know, it will uh, en uh, enrich and empowering, uh, complementary to each other. So during COVID-19, most educational institution, uh, not only in higher education, but also from early childhood education, attempt to switch to online education. Um, so uh, with uh, different uh, gradations. Uh, all ICT that already have their uses are shifted for online learning. Uh, for example, you know, we use our handphone uh, mostly for chatting, WhatsApp, update status, etc. You know, suddenly with the COVID, even though before we already attempt to uh, push our uh, uh, fellow Indonesian to use their technology to for uh, study or for teaching and learning, but it doesn't work. Uh, when it comes to COVID, you know, we have no choice. You know, we have to utilize whatever we have. So uh, in order to do that, uh, uh, not all of us can uh, keep up with all the technology, but 
uh, at least it is a, become a challenge for us how we can transform our educational uh, uh, institution into uh, digital uh, institutions. And ongoing digital transformation educational sectors. Uh, first, as I just mentioned, policies and regulations, it is uh, being adjusted and educational institution from early childhood school to higher education institution, training center, etc. This is also uh, uh, according to their, their capacity, their capability, they try to transform their institution uh, to adopt this uh, online learning. And information and communication infrastructures uh, with this COVID situation, we realize that uh, there are a digital gap, yeah, the uh, infrastructure gap. Uh, we, some of our area, especially in remote area, uh, really lack of infrastructures. And in order to deliver online teaching and learning, it's not as easy as uh, uh, when we are living in the big city. So uh, thanks to the COVID, by having COVID, we can map it more clearer, you know, where the area that need to be intervened with all these uh, uh, infra infrastructures, uh, including like server, internet, bandwidth, uh, etc. Also electric. And uh, next is learning applications. See, uh, we are caught by surprise with this COVID and suddenly at the middle of our uh, educational situations, we have to shift it to online learning. So we try to utilize whatever we have uh, from social media application. Yeah, uh, usually we use WhatsApp to say hi, say hello to others. Now we can push some of our uh, uh, materials you know, through WhatsApp and also uh, video through uh, uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, etc. And two sophisticated learning management, some institutions already familiar with uh, uh, some of the learning management system, especially Moodles, yeah, and uh, plus online meeting like using Zoom, like we just have now, uh, uh, Google Meet, yeah, WebEx, etc. So I think this is uh, in line with just from uh, Fikram said that uh, all this uh, technology that we have, we have or we use, not really. Uh, naturally lend itself for uh, education. It is uh, like for meeting, official meeting, etc. Uh, it's not really uh, replacing or uh, uh, mimicking the virtual classroom. So uh, that's why we're really looking forward for the virtual classroom that Acharya used. And digital learning contents. With COVID also we realized that our digital content so far are scattering everywhere and we don't really have a uh, clear map, you know, what we already have, what we really don't have, but we know that uh, when we want to teach, you know, we don't have time to transfer it to digital, we try to find it from other sources, etc. So with all these hectic problems, you know, it's come, uh, it becomes our uh, motivations, you know, how we can uh, put it, things in order. And then human resources, uh, teachers, lecturers, school manager, etc. We need to improve their uh, capacity building, uh, not only uh, in teaching and learning uh, as a traditional way, but we have to uh, adopt and include uh, technology in their pedagogy as well. So educational landscapes will never be the same again. I am very sure about, about that. Yeah, uh, we thought we realized you know it's almost uh, four months. You know, we are already uh, practicing this online uh, education or online learning and it's move on until up to December. We don't know after that if it's COVID still there, you know, I'm sure that the government will prolong this online uh, learning. So in order to anticipate uh, further, uh, it will be more adaptive. Yeah, educations uh, with this uh, online learning will be more adaptive because uh, it comes to the individual, not only uh, a group of people in, or a group of students in class, but it is uh, uh, go to the individuals. And it will be more flexible, agile, and also more personal self-learning, more contextual, more relevant, and more humans. Yeah, because uh, we can learn uh, at our own times, at 
our own uh, styles uh, and our own uh, situation and conditions and more freedom for sure so what we have now the situation in uh, mostly uh, all the institution that uh, transform their education into digital they uh, use all technology that they have now yeah from uh, very primitive handphone to a very sophisticated uh, handphone smartphone laptops etc uh, and we try to uh, optimize all the functions in that technology in that gadgets you know how we can support how they can support our uh, online learning our online education that's from the technology point of view so we we, we can imagine that the range of the use uh, of the technology usage is very wide from a simple features to a very complicated features so uh, in another word you know we haven't have a, a standard yet what are the uh, uh, a set of features that can be uh, sufficient or minimal to use in uh, online education and from the application point of view as uh, i mentioned earlier we, some of us use facebooks some of us, us use uh, WhatsApp, some of us use a uh, web browser, Instagram, and the, th the one that more sophisticated, they already use a uh, uh, learning management system such as uh, models and also uh, get engaged with uh, several uh, learning resources such as uh, Rumah Belajar. Um, but again, you know, through, through this COVID, we realized that all these applications are scattered not really converging to uh, 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 a clear objective, but uh, at least it solves uh, a very uh, temporary problems in a short periods. Uh, so we really looking forward uh, how we're gonna solve the problems uh, for more permanence. And learning content. This is also a problem. Uh, we saw. Uh, what you call that, so uh, preoccupied with the traditional learning, most of our learning contents available in printed matters, or if it is not in printed matters, it is in the textbook and uh, transfer some of it to our mind. So when it is come to uh, online educations, you know, uh, all this learning content has to be presented uh, in uh, through se several channels and we realized that a lot of uh, 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 hole or in there, a lot of uh, um, weaknesses uh, in order to deliver uh, learning, uh, digital learning contents. So now uh, some of the uh, group individuals uh, racing to provide all this uh, digital content through class, MOOC, digital library, uh, digital content from online sources, museum, etc. So uh, with uh, different gradation of digital transformation education, right now we can see that uh, in Indonesia, we put it in one big uh, uh, systems, how our traditional teaching and learning uh, at the same token also can deliver uh, digital uh, online learning, yeah, such as, as you can see in this uh, diagram, we can learn anytime, anywhere uh, in the quadrant four. Uh, this is uh, the aims or the solutions for uh, COVID that we face right now. And also we try, we try very hard how to uh, improve the quality of uh, human resources, especially for the teachers, uh, lecturers, uh, school managers, etc., by uh, integrating pedagogies and technology according to the advancements of technology as we can see in this slide. And what is the developments and future direction of online education in Indonesia? For sure that it is a point of no returns. Yeah, we cannot go back to our previous one. Uh, we, uh, with this COVID, uh, learned that uh, online learning is an alternative to the situation where someone or um, teachers cannot uh, meet face to face. Um, online education is empowering traditional education. A lot of people uh, make a protest or critics 
saying that uh, online education it seems like uh, replacing or erasing uh, traditional education not at all as i just showed in that four quadrant before it is a complementary each other's no i although i act i can say that uh, it is almost impossible to 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 have an online education if you don't have a very strong traditional education so uh, the indonesian governments need to leverage its key resources like ict infrastructures you know we need government interventions to uh, sufficient the ict infrastructure especially in remote area also uh, to advance the application uh, this also we looking forward like uh, what the acharya has you know virtual classroom and digital content human resources policies and regulation continuous quality improvement of online education this is also uh, something that we have uh, to do yeah we we cannot ignore that uh, because we don't want to hear complain from the community from the stakeholders that uh, online education just like uh, replacing or uh, moving to another area from class to the computers you know we don't want to have that and uh, last but not least it is a capacity building on all stakeholders as i mentioned before since you know the the capacity or the capability of our human resources varied from area to area from school to another school so, so we have to expedite we have to uh, speed up the capacity building uh, especially for our teachers and uh, lecturers including our students will and develop resource sharing entities this is also the, an effort that we would like to or some already done yeah like for samples in Apticom, we already developed MOOCs, massive open online courses. The idea behind it, you know, we're gonna deliver the courses that uh, maybe not too many people really uh, excellence in delivering the course, so they can uh, uh, access it through MOOCs and deliver it in their uh, own uh, institution. Publication, this is also related to the research collaboration, etc. Government governments must provide basic infrastructure such as last mile access this is also a problem for us and uh one other things that we would like to uh government provide is uh government has to provide incentive to the participants so the motivation still high and also uh, uh recognition is there etc in conclusion as a nation delivering online education need a coordinated action government business academician and community online education is not cancelling the uh, traditional education instead it is empowering it it is complementary continuous human capacity building is a must but integrating by integrating pedagogy and technology i think that's all my sharing hopefully uh, with a very short presentation everyone has an idea you know where we are at now and uh, where we are going and hopefully with uh, almost 4,600 higher education institution in Indonesia, uh, they can uh, adapt to this uh, transformation of uh, digital. And we are looking forward uh, for all the technologies that can provide solution to all the problems. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prof. Um, thank you very much for your presentation. And I believe uh, from your presentation, what I can understand is that every crisis does create opportunities also, because there are many things which we always used to prolong it. Uh, but because of the COVID, I think uh, now we are looking into many different areas, which previously we never thought about it. So very interesting, Prof. Thank you so much, Prof. Uh, now, before we uh, enter the next session, uh, yes, Professor Vikram. Professor Vikram, we can't hear you. We can't hear you, Prof. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, Professor, I must say it was a very insightful presentation. A uh, lot of interesting points, research-based. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Professor Vikram. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, before we move to the next uh, part of the session, um, I would like to share, I mean, the team would like to share certain photos. Bapai Bu Kita Mau share photo photo yang uh, kemarin yang ada kunjungan dari Apticom ke India. Jadi 
ini kita mau share beberapa foto Bapak Ibu yang kita tanda tangan MOU waktu ada kunjungan. So the visit was from the 9th of Feb until the 15th of Feb in India. Uh, ada 30 peserta dari Apticom yang led by Prof. Zainal Hasibuan. Uh, and then ada ke dua kota seperti yang awal kita sampaikan Bapak Ibu. Jadi itu kan ke Chennai dan ke Bangalore. And yeah, you can see all of them were trying, I mean, looking forward to work. Jadi ini kan bukan cuma MOU ya Bapak Ibu untuk tanda tangan, tapi ini udah langsung implementasi. Jadi terima kasih uh, Prof. Zainal. Jadi langsung kita bisa diimplementasikan. Ya. Yeah. So maybe we can just run through the photos. Maybe photos kita, kita we can just share the photos to all of them. Right. Ini ada MOU yang udah tanda tangan sama SRM Institute of uh, uh, Institute of Science and Technology yang di Chennai. Uh, dan ada sekitar 25 universitas dari uh, uh, Indonesia yang ditanda tangan. Yep. Next. Right. So you can see all these. Ini adalah Bapak Ibu yang dimulainya dari sini. Jadi hasilnya salah satu adalah yang hari ini Bapak Ibu. Dan ini bukan yang terakhir, ini yang awalnya. So I'm sure there will be many, many more uh, collaborative opportunities yang kita bisa diimplementasikan antara India dan Indonesia. Right, ini adalah di Sri Ramachandra Institute of Higher Education yang ada di Chennai juga Bapak Ibu. Right, so there was a meeting discussions about the ways of collaborative opportunities uh, yang kita bisa diimplementasikan antara India dan Indonesia. Yep, next. Right, this was uh, another MOU which was signed with uh, Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology yang ada di Chennai juga ya Bapak Ibu. Uh, ada juga kunjungan ke satu uh, industry visit which was to Zoho uh, juga ada waktu kita ada kunjungan ke India. Yeah, next. Right, that's all. So thank you so much, uh, 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 Prof, uh, once again for, for your presentation. And thank you also, Professor Vikram, for your presentation. Uh, before yes, we move into the question and answer session, Bapak Ibu, uh, maybe uh, kita mungkin boleh minta agar session sharing uh, tentang the experience uh, about the visit to India dan juga mungkin bisa di... Uh, uh, disampaikan apa yang kita bisa dilakukan setelah acara uh, yang ini dan juga setelah kunjungan ke India. So may I now request uh, uh, Pak Ari Presetio uh, from Gunadharma who is also uh, uh, in charge of the Apticom uh, International Collaboration Development uh, to please share your thoughts. Pak Ari, the screen is yours. Uh, Pak Ari, are you there, Pak? Okay, uh, maybe Dr. Wendy is busy. Maybe we'll come back to Dr. Wendy uh, in some time. Uh, so maybe, uh, Bapak Ibu, mungkin kita bisa lanjut sesi ini dengan uh, question and answer session, uh, Bapak Ibu. Uh, the first question uh, is actually for Professor Vikram. Uh, the question is actually from uh, Paula Devanti. And uh, the question is, uh, for the new semester, how do you profile your students in a faster and simpler way, Prof? Prof Vikram? Uh, sir, we can't hear you, Prof. We, we are not able to hear you. Uh, may we request the admin to please un unmute uh, Prof. Vikram's microphone, please. Thank you. Okay. Yes, uh, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, am I audible now? Yes, sir. You're audible. Please. Uh, can, 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 uh, may I request you to repeat the question, please? Sure, sir. Uh, the question is actually from Paula Devanti. Uh, and the question is, for the new semester, how do you profile your students in a faster and simpler way. Thank you. Okay, a very interesting question. Uh, what we generally do at Acharya is there is a system called proctoring. Uh, there is a proctor and there is a procti. So 
each student has uh, will be uh, assigned a proctor so uh, for example uh, i have around eight students under me uh, who are my proctors so i will sit with these eight students i will have a counseling session with them these days the counseling sessions are online so i try to understand their style of thinking their uh, the social cultural aspects so i get to understand them first and then i, I also uh, uh, you know i'm trying to yeah. understand pa- pa- so, saya, saya di di lock saya di lock tadi okay uh, yes pa we'll just come back saya di lock sama hostnya boleh dibuka ya yeah sure pa after this we'll come back pa thank you pa boleh dibuka yes sorry pro please uh, Yeah. Okay. So, so once I, I understand, understand. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, bro. Yeah. Okay. So once I understand uh, my students after the counseling session, after the proctoring session, then I will also try and understand how they uh, behave in my classroom. How exactly they, uh, you know, spend time in the classroom and what are the learning styles. Once that happens, that is clear to me as to uh, what profile uh, they come under, and then I profile them accordingly. Okay, right. Thank you so much, uh, Professor. Thank you for your uh, answer, and I hope uh, Paula Devanti, your your question is answered. Uh, Bapak Ibu, maaf sebelum kita lanjutin yang sesi uh, pertanyaan jawab, may I request uh, uh, Dr. Wendy uh, to please uh, share his comments? Uh, karena Bapak tadi ada uh, ada kegiatan lain juga, jadi minta maaf Bapak Ibu. Uh, Dr. Wendy, may I request you to please share your views uh, as a chairman, as a chairperson for Apticom International Cooperation. Oke, okay. so, thank you very much uh, Pak Rafi. Yeah, thank you Pak. Eh uh, Oke, okay, thank you. Eh uh, Honorable Pak Rafi, Honorable Prof Zainal Azibuan and Honorable Prof Vikram eh uh, yang terhormat Pak Ed Prasetyo, Ibu Nina and everybody my colleagues from Indonesia and India. Uh, my apology because I have to attend two meetings at the same time so uh, i have to uh, just uh, my uh, presentation surely uh, first uh, that mr rafi asked me to give some impression about uh, our collaboration between indonesia and india first i re- i re- recall when i met mr rafi and some uh, delegation from acharya that introduced uh, us to many many universities in india that can uh, ready to collaborate with indonesian university following our ancient universities which is uh, nalanda university and sriwijaya university back then uh, okay, when could please increase your voice pa so you know clearly please sorry Is it clear enough? Yeah, now it's clear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, first, uh, yeah. the idea of going to India to uh, conduct a collaboration between Indonesian University, especially members of Apticom and Indian universities. Uh, when I when I heard about the uh, back then many many centuries ago, we have call. In the, actually, India and Indonesia, not Indonesia back that time, uh, Nalanda University from India, from uh, Kingdom of Pala, has uh, already conduct a very, very tight collaboration with Sriwijaya University in, in uh, Sumatra. So, and then it was uh, in uh, 12 centuries, I, I remember. And then uh, I think after i learned about what india already uh, made for their education i think that's a good a chance for indonesian university especially uh, members of ticom to do the collaboration with uh, india uh, universities and alhamdulillah in the beginning of february more than 20 university have a chance had a chance to visit uh, India's university, not so many, only four, two in, uh, two in uh, Chennai and two in Bangalore. But before, in 2019, uh, my university, Budilur University, already have an Asian student 
between Universitas Budilur and Acharya University and the students uh, have a very very uh, a lot of experience they have a cultural change education good education and then they make a good collaboration between Indonesia and uh, India especially Acharya and Budilur that's why from that experience I would like to have many universities from Indonesia and India make a collaboration as a, a, a what, can, what can I say? I think uh, that's to in order to make uh, our education, especially in computing engineering, which is uh, what we had experience in visiting some university. They have very very good research, so I think uh, we can collaborate in doing research, uh, research collaboration, teaching collaboration, exchange student, exchange teacher, and many, 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 many uh, program. Hopefully next year after pandemic of COVID-19 become disappear, we can make it happen easier. But from now, as the first uh, collaboration, we do it using online uh, seminar. I think that's all, uh, uh, Pak Rafi. Sorry. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much, Dr. Wendy. Thank you so much for sharing your inputs. Uh, jadi, uh, Bapak, Bapak Ibu yang terhormat, yang peserta-peserta, just to inform you all that the collaborative links can be explored. Uh, of course, uh, seperti Prof. Zainal juga disampaikan, that these are extraordinary times, but every crisis does create an opportunity also. So, kalau ada universitas-universitas dari Indonesia yang ingin kerjasama, uh, please contact Opticom uh, office and uh, and then the Opticom office will uh, definitely guide you all on how do we implement, uh, you know, the collaboration through the assistance of uh, Pa Ari and Dr. Wendy, right? So, thank you so much, Dr. Wendy, Pa Ari, for sharing your inputs. Terima kasih. Yeah. Okay. Jadi, uh, Bapak Ibu, kita lanjutin sama pertanyaan-pertanyaan tadi. Yang mungkin yang pertanyaan kedua, the second question, uh, what we have is from Igla, Ignas Lam. Lama Belawa. I'm so sorry, maybe my, my pronunciation was wrong. Uh, the question is actually to Professor Vikram. Uh, the question is, uh, what is Klinger? Uh, can you explain a little bit more? Because uh, in Indonesia, uh, Klinger is not very clear. So maybe Prof uh, Vikram, can you please a little bit explain a little bit more about the word Klinger, please? Thank yes. you. Uh, yeah. Uh, so Klinger means uh, these are a type of students. We all have in our class, very nice students, but uh, generally they keep asking for a lot of technical help in the classroom. Uh, so at times this may uh, disturb the flow of the class. For example, uh, as I said, the student may say uh, his laptop is not working or the student may say his pen is not working and he needs a pen. Okay, for small, small things, he tries to uh, you know, um, disturb the student. So uh, if you have some students like this, then it means uh, you will have to counsel them well in advance, prepare them and tell them that this may disturb the flow of the class and it may disturb others in the class. So uh, that is how you manage them. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Prof. Uh, I hope the question of uh, Ignas Lama Balewa has been answered. Uh, the third question uh, is actually from... Uh, just a minute, there's so many questions and I'm shifting between the paper and the, uh, the technologies. Uh, the, the third question is uh, from uh, Pa Sukris Sutyan to know. Uh, the problem is we must, uh, we must uh, similarize about our approach for all the students from different backgrounds in, um, in the front of the class. Uh, so what do you, what is your suggestion? Uh, maybe uh, Prof Zainal and probably Prof Vikram could also share your inputs, uh, Prof. Uh, I'll repeat the question is, the problem is we must similarize our approach uh, for all the students from different backgrounds in front of the class, which I think is not easy. I mean, that's what uh, uh, is the comment. So maybe some, some views or opinion, uh, Prof Zainal and also followed by Prof Vikram. 
Prof, your, uh, the, your microphone. Yes, Prof. Thank yeah. you. If it is a traditional classroom, uh, that's what happened. We uh, try to uh, uh, assume all the students uh, have uh, the same motivation, the same uh, 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 likeness to the courses that he or she attend, etc. Uh, there's also uh, one of the advantage uh, in online learning. You know, you can be more personal. You can be more personalized. What I mean. Uh, with uh, all the features uh, in most of the learning management system and also in some features that Prof Vikram shows, you know, we can uh, be more uh, personalized uh, between uh, lecturers to the students and uh, among the students as well, a group of students, etc. So uh, when we, uh, in traditional classrooms, uh, all these uh, personalizations almost uh, absence uh, unless we have a lot of time to approach uh, one by one uh, uh, the students. So uh, I think the question, what it means is, you know, when it is the first times we go online in order to introduce ourselves, uh, uh, we can use uh, technology like this. And maybe uh, there is a feature as well in uh, a virtual classroom that uh, Acharya has uh, in Moodle for sure uh, with a new uh, versions have uh, uh, big blue buttons that we can go alive, etc. Uh, but uh, the disadvantage of uh, this uh, kind of technology, uh, we have a very uh, limited bandwidth and quota. So if we use in every session to have a, a live chat like this or a live video like this, synchronous, uh, I think uh, our budget will be bleeding. Uh, so. Uh, uh, we can use probably in one semester, uh, two or three times uh, to have a, a virtual meeting like this to get uh, uh, closer to each other. And uh, after that, we can divide it into several groups that we can use other uh, channel of te technology. That's what happened in Indonesia. And I'm sure that uh, in the virtual classroom, uh, they have uh, more integrated features so uh, uh, what the question is uh, trying to uh, ask is, you know, if it is in traditional again, you know, it's not easy to have a, a more personalized approach, but with uh, online learnings, you know, you have all these advantages. Uh, I think uh, that's my answer, Mr. Ravi. Yeah, thank you, Prof. Thank you so much. Uh, Prof Vikram, would you like to add on something, Prof Vikram? Yeah, uh, definitely, yes. Uh, I completely agree with what uh, Dr. Zainul uh, mentioned just now. Uh, it is very uh, difficult in, in a traditional classroom. Uh, what is more important here is a teacher needs to have a lot of data about the student. So when the teacher has a lot of data about the students, those data points will be helpful for him to make uh, critical decisions about different aspects of the uh, teaching learning methods. So online, it is easy for you to capture the data and leverage on data to make uh, certain decisions and choices to improve the, uh, you know, academic delivery. Okay, sure. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Prof. Vikram. Uh, the next question, uh, Bapa Ibu, uh, and uh, the question, sorry, was actually from STMAK Bina Patria Magellan. Jadi, Pak Sukris, terima kasih banyak, Pak, untuk pertanyaan tadi. Uh, the next question is actually from pa Ari Prasetyo, and the question is actually to uh, Prof. Vikram. Uh, the question is, uh, what is all uh, learning in Acharya uh, uses synchronous, synchronous media learning, or is it a mix? What about the faculty of engineering for lab work? Okay, Prof. Uh, it is, it is uh, mostly uh, mixed in nature. And uh, very quickly for the lab purpose, we also have a, a component called virtual labs. Okay. So the, these virtual labs are part of Acharya Live and uh, uh, the engineering faculty, they, they use virtual labs to uh, teach students. And especially during this COVID situation, uh, that is the way we are trying to reach out to students and deliver uh, lab components. Okay. Right. Thank you so much. And I hope uh, the question is answered, Yavari. Thank you, Prof. Vikram, for your quest for your answer. Uh, the next question is actually from uh, from Dian Budiargo. 
and the question is actually for prof zainal uh, uh prof zainal what do you mean by what do you mean with odl uh, is more contextual because teachers and students are in different places please explain uh prof your microphone thank you okay uh yeah again you know uh this is what i uh stress in our in my previous presentation that we need to develop uh pedagogy uh with the technology uh because uh in uh, uh online distance learning the teachers and the students are in different places and the situations are uh, made different uh from one place to another place so <clears throat> we have to uh probably uh need to gather uh uh some information in advance uh, just to uh understand or to uh view uh where all the uh, students uh, reside whether it is in a uh, village in kampung or it is in the big cities or it is in uh, uh some other area that uh as what happened like us you know sometimes we don't we realize there is a background voices that not only bothering uh, uh, who saying it, but also bothering others. So uh, uh, that's why probably the more information need to be gathered in advance just to understand the situations, uh, especially also uh, students from remote area where the bandwidth very limited. Sometimes it is get connected, sometimes it is disconnected uh, uh, also other uh, um, interference from uh, 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 what you call that from uh, rain, uh, lightning, et cetera, et cetera. So, but uh, I'm sure that when we do it, uh, we can learn by, by doing it. You know, we, we know, uh, see, there are a lot of things that surprise us that we haven't think before. Uh, where, while we are doing it, you know, we can get some insight, you know, how to uh, get uh, uh, adapted and get caught with the, 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 the situations. So uh, what my suggestion is uh, just use the Nike uh, Iklan, uh, just do it and learn from it. I think uh, that's my suggestion, Mr. Rafi. Thank you so much, bro. That's true, Prof. The situation is that we have to do it. Uh, and, and there are a lot of things we are learning and I'm, I, I believe it's all in the improvement state. So yeah, we have to do it. Thank you so much, Prof. Thank you. Thank you for your, uh, for your valuable answer. The next question um, is uh, from Tantri Sri uh, Kusriyanti from STMAK Bina Sarana Global. And uh, Batantri wants to ask, how can we have an interactive online education to students uh, who won't have motivation in doing the online education. Uh, so maybe this question I can uh, uh, probably ask Professor Vikram and then probably Prof Zainal also could share your inputs. Yeah, yeah. Prof Vikram, please. A uh, very interesting question, I must say. Uh, the the uh, uh, Sir, your voice is not very audible. Can you just be a little bit more closer, sir? Thank you. Yeah, uh, the motivation levels uh, of students uh, I don't think uh, will vary because it is online or offline. Yes, there can be some, uh, you know, uh, at, at, to an extent, yes, there can be a difference. But uh, me as a teacher, I have to always look at uh, this very positively. Uh, my role here is not uh, faculty anymore or a lecturer anymore. So I need to understand the students, his objectives, his goal, uh, his uh, objectives in life and career. And then accordingly, once I understand, I need to counsel the student and uh, you know, help him understand why uh, technology will be uh, the future and why he or she should open his mind to acquire knowledge. For example, knowledge can be acquired from any channels. There shouldn't be any restrictions. So it's about uh, me as a teacher helping the student to open up his mind and accept technology uh, and tell him the advantages of uh, technology and online sessions and how it can be interesting. So it, it, is, it has got more to do with counseling the student. 
Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Vikram. Prof. Zainal, your thoughts, Prof. Yeah. Uh, Motivation is not only a problem in online learning, Mr. Rafi and all my fellows, it's also uh, a problem in a traditional learning. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, what is the solution for the traditional learning? Uh, I'm sure that more likely also applicable to the online learning. Uh, so uh, uh, first of all, uh, we have to look at our self as a, a lecturers, uh, whether or not the material that we would like to deliver, uh, it is uh, suitable to the level of knowledge of our students. Uh, I remember when I was an uh, undergraduate at Bogor at the times, uh, of my first and second years thought by the young PhD from America, from Europe, you know, uh, what they thought at the times, you know, I completely uh, blank uh, because Later on, I realized the courses that they taught me, it is a uh, 600 level courses. I realized that when I just uh, went to America, you know, oh, this is the course that I taught at the undergraduate. In America, it is level 500 and 600, you know. <laughs> uh, so it's really uh, uh, demotivated, the, not only myself at the time, but some of our, uh, my, my friends in the class. So. Uh, same thing in online learning, you know, you have to make the material more attractive, uh, do not scare the students at the beginning, you know, uh, you can speed up the, the learning curve, but uh, uh, first of all, uh, you need to, to understand the psychology of your students. And with the online learning, sometimes things under control, Mr. Rafi, you know, if we're posting something, uh, maybe at the time, most of the students have a lot of times and uh, they re reply our posting and we just like uh, 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 have a big abundance, you know, to reply it. So this uh, happened to the uh, lecturers who are not uh, uh, have experience in teaching and learning through online. You know, so like me, you know, probably I just wait until one or two days. And after that, I answer it one by one, you know, because uh, there's also the advantage of uh, online learning. You are not just confined in one or two hours in class. You know, you have a whole week, you know, to discuss the topic that you would like to deliver in that week, you know. So because uh, we have 14 to 16 weeks in a semester, so you have the whole weeks uh, to discuss the topic. Why we have to uh, put uh, all the abundance in the beginning and then after that, uh, we disappear, etc. So um, uh, again, going back to the motivations, uh, I would like to call on my friends. You know, uh, it starts from the lecturers. Uh, make sure that our materials are interesting, and also uh, make sure that we post regularly uh, at uh, trigger point of view, like uh, permit you, we call it you know, simple questions uh, and give a incentive to who respond. For example, you know, in traditional teaching and learning, uh, we have to sign for the absence. Uh, the absence may be worth of 10% of the, toward the grade. So in online learning, we can do the same things, you know, whoever replied to the post, you know, you have a, a, a contribution to your participants and it is worth it like, 15% total toward your, your grade. So I'm sure that all the students participate, even though sometimes their answer or the reply doesn't mean anything at all. That also can be an input to us as a lecturers because we know uh, what the uh, uh, level of understanding of our students. And then from there, we can uh, do a, 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 a personalization uh, with our students who are maybe lacking uh, in understanding our uh, materials. Uh, what I did in online learning, for example, Mr. Ravi and my friends, you know, I always give a, a quick quiz online. Yeah, maybe 10 to 20 questions. And I divide my question into three categories, difficult, uh, middle, and very easy. So if the students, even a simple question, easy question, uh, they cannot answer it, so I need to talk to them. So I can uh, provide 
uh, uh, special time to them to discuss through online, etc. And most of the time, it's work. Yeah, uh, because uh, a lot of uh, students have a, uh, what you call the stumbling block, not because of they don't understand it or not because of they, they don't have a sufficient capacity to learn it. They have uh, other problems uh, behind it, you know, and we have to unroot it and then it, it can go smoothly. So I think that's my answer, Mr. Rafi. Thank you so much, Prof. And just to share some experience, I mean, I've used the Alive platform, Prof, once. And I think the strategy what Acharya uses is that they have a polling, uh, you know, option. And they do that polling at the start, in the middle. I mean, say, for example, Kalu Adasesi Untuk Satustanga Jam. So at the start, there's a question, a quiz. In the middle, there's a question. And again, at the end, also is a question. So to understand, you know, how many students understand and how many students don't understand. So thank you so much, Prof. Thank you, uh, you know, for for that uh, uh, for the details. Uh, Bapak Ibu, kita ada pertanyaan uh, berikutnya. Uh, this is actually from uh, Nazaruddin Ahmed, and this question is actually to Prof Zainal. Uh, how to make an interest learning with the current condition, especially in IT learning? Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Ravi. I already uh, answered that in uh, chat. But again, uh, I uh, I repeat it again. Uh, actually, more or less, more or, more or less, is the same with our traditional uh, teaching and learning. You know how we can make our traditional teaching and learning uh, more interesting to the students. You know, is more or less it will ap applicable as well to the online learning. Uh, uh, part of the answer is already mentioned. It like you know we have to look at our uh, contents that we would like to deliver to the students, make sure that uh, it is the content that are suitable to their levels, you know, uh, not to repeat my bad experience when I was an undergraduate, I got uh, this 600 levels courses uh, while I was just in the second year so in the college, you know, so uh, you can imagine, you know, it's beyond my uh, imagination how to understand that kind of uh, courses. And secondly, uh, make sure that uh, we pose or we make a triggering uh, exercise. Uh, like for example, you know, what do you think about uh, mm -hmm. this class or what, do you, what is your expectation of this class? How much do you know about this class, etc.? You know, it's in a, a simple question with a simple answers. But uh, from there, uh, we can at least get a uh, classification of our students uh, who understand about or have a sufficient background, uh, or who doesn't have special background, etc. And from there, we can arrange a strategy that more suitable. And again, you know, in online learning, from my past experience, is really, really uh, flexible, really, really adaptive to the uh, variations. Uh, it's also really, really uh, agile yeah, to learning styles, whatever learning style the student have. Um, Sometimes the question come at 12 o'clock at night, uh, but you don't have to answer right away. You know, you have to uh, uh, postpone it a while. And then uh, while thinking, maybe some other question similar to it, come, etc. Uh, again, I have a lot of complaint from my fellow uh, lecturers. They are more busy in online learning because they uh, get online 24 hours in front of uh, their laptops, you know, just to answering uh, all the students' questions. I think that's not correct. And that's why, you know, the pedagogy with the technology need to be integrated and they have to, uh, uh, you can learn from the experience uh, besides, you know, join conference like this, uh, sharing experience from the, the one who has uh, uh, delivering it online. Thank you, Ravi. Yeah, thank you, Prof. Uh, just two more questions, uh, Prof. Vikram and Prof. Zainal. Uh, one question actually is again from Pan Nazaruddin Ahmed to Prof. Zainal, and it is in Bahasa. So, Prof, please allow me to speak in Bahasa. Mungkin sedikit tambahan, Prof. Zainal, khususnya untuk awal semester, di mana kita belum pernah ketemu dengan mahasiswa baru yang masuk ke prodi uh, kita, Prof. Mungkin ada tips, uh, tips and tricks, uh, tips, Prof. Uh, uh, tips and tricks, Prof. Zainal. Yeah, uh, yeah. I suggest that for the first time meeting, we can use uh, 
uh, online meeting like this, you know, whether using Zoom, WebEx, etc., you know, or maybe other uh, learning management system that has a uh, online meeting like this. Uh, so, um, but again, uh, it's not good if you use it all the time because it will uh, suck up your bandwidth, your quota. Uh, you, uh, it will uh, spend a lot of time. Uh, secondly, you know, uh, during that meeting, make sure that we really reach out the students. Uh, do have a previous information about uh, who are our students are, where they come from, you know, what are their backgrounds, etc. So by picking two or three examples, for example, in certain area, saying the the word from their area, for example, make everyone laughing, etc. I'm sure that it will change the atmospheres, and I'm sure that. Uh, the uh, what you call that knowing each other's will be continuing uh, through asynchronous and we can combine it with synchronous like this like we have right now but again the proportion that I already suggest uh, during the semesters you know you can effectively uh, three to five uh, online meeting like this uh, for one or one and a half hours uh, to recap and then to see uh, directly the faces of our students. Uh, other than that, you can post it in uh, the learning management systems uh, through asynchronous mode, uh, and then uh, also can post a video over there, uh, uh, pictures, uh, animations, text, uh, and etc. Audio as well. Thank you, Mr. Ravi. Thank you, Prof. Uh, thank you. And the last question, uh, Prof and Prof Vikram, the question is for both of you all. Uh, the question is from Marcus Mamanki. Uh, for Prof Zainal and Prof Vikram, how to, handle, how to handle online learning for vocational schools that use practices in accordance with respective majors? Thank you. Uh, maybe Prof Zainal, you could, uh, you could first answer, Prof, and then you can ask Professor Vikram. Thank you. Yeah, for vocational uh, schools, uh, like a uh, polytechnic, etc. As I also mentioned in several occasions, if it is cannot be uh, digitalized, you know, do not do that. You know, why we have to force ourselves uh, have to be digitalized. But at the same token, you know, we have to be open-minded. You know, if it is uh, to a certain degree can be digitalized, why not? You know, why we have to force ourselves to go to the lab uh, where the COVID is still there, where all the danger is still there. You know, there is, uh, again, you know, uh, I realized that some of the materials can deliver, if it is not the whole material, maybe part of it, or maybe one fourth of it can be delivered through online, you know. Uh, for example, you know, when we go to the lab, we have to deliver step by step how to inform in the lab through online instead of teaching it in the lab. So again, uh, that saves time uh, for the uh, physical engagement in the lab. Secondly, um, we also can provide, uh, for example, video, uh, how to use, for example, tool or equipments that he or she will use in that lab before they're really going into the lab. So it is save the time uh, for the students to understand previously uh, what the lab is look like, you know, uh, because I come from the undergraduate that we use a lot of lab. I can remember that, you know, I really get bored to, to listen to the assistants, you know, for the guideline, etc. You know, that part of it can be delivered. And also by having that uh, dividing part of it into online, we can uh, arrange small group of students who can enter the lab without uh, uh, compacting each other, you know. So we can maintain the physical distancing and uh, this will help. Uh, also, we can open up the, the hours more longer, so uh, the practical work that cannot be di di digitized, that also can be uh, done uh, very well during this uh, situation. Thank you, Mr. Ravi. Uh, thank you, Prof. Uh, Prof Vikram, your, your, your insights, Prof? Yeah, uh, adding to what uh, Dr. Zainal uh, just said, uh, the uh, thing here is, I, I guess, I believe uh, it, 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 uh, hybrid learning is very suitable for uh, vocational uh, programs. Uh, what you, what a teacher can do or what an institution can do is, 
there are some aspects which can be taken online uh, it can be taught online and uh, a uh, few more uh, sessions can be taught in the physical classroom with very less number of uh, students by uh, you know carefully maintaining you know having the social distancing so uh, my suggestion is definitely to go for uh, hybrid learning where which, which is a mixture of a uh, mixture of online plus uh, live lab sessions along with the virtual labs that are always available right fine thank you prof uh, vikram thanks a lot for your inputs okay so i think uh, due to the short of time we cannot uh, continue more questions ya uh, bapak ibu tapi kalau ada pertanyaan nanti mungkin bisa dikirim ke tim aptikom dan mungkin kita coba bapak ibu uh, cara ni gimana kita bisa ini jadi sebelum kita selesai uh, kita ada beberapa hal bapak ibu yang kita mau di share juga so for that may i request uh, ibu nina uh, who's the vice secretary general of aptikom Uh, to please share her views on the implementation of international collaboration uh, ibunina may I please request you to, to please share your views the screen is yours hello mr uh, rapi thank you honorable prof uchok honorable prof rikam uh, yang terhormat dr eri dr wendy juga teman-teman aptikom goes to india dan lain-lain uh, yang lagi nonton sekarang ini juga semua panitia yang telah bekerja dengan sangat maksimal uh, terima kasih sudah bisa gabung di sini teman-teman semua tentu aptikom itu adalah asosiasi pendidikan tinggi informatika dan komputer izin prof ucok saya ceritakan karena beberapa ada yang dari luar termasuk dari teman-teman komunitas saya juga pada nonton dari Ada yang dari komunitas SMP, SMA, ada komunitas doktoral juga uh, pada nonton, saya lihat di situ. Jadi Aptikom itu adalah asosiasi pendidikan tinggi informatika dan komputer yang tentunya memiliki uh, tujuan untuk meningkatkan uh, kemampuan akademik atau kemamp- peningkatan uh, di bidang teknologi informasi, SDM di bidang teknologi informasi di Indonesia. Dan tentu salah satunya banyak bekerja sama ya, di antaranya yaitu kerjasama akademik, yaitu Uh, U2U yaitu universitas dengan universitas baik dalam maupun luar negeri dan ini adalah contohnya yang kita lakukan adalah kerjasama antara uh, lembaga pendidikan yang ada di Indonesia dan lembaga yang ada pendidikan di India tentu seperti itu U2U baik yang di dalam maupun luar negeri kemudian yang kedua adalah U2B yaitu University to Business banyak sekali kerjasama kerjasama perusahaan seperti Joho yang di luar negeri ya kita juga benchmark ke sana juga dengan Oracle kalau yang di dalam negeri juga yang lainnya adalah U2G yaitu University dengan government dengan pemerintahan Aptikom sendiri beberapa kali mengimplementasikan kerjasama kerjasama dengan beberapa kementerian dan provinsi ya dan yang terakhir adalah U2C dan tentu karena masalah pandemi ini pandemi COVID-19 ini tentu yang tadinya kita mau kunjungan-kunjungan lagi ke luar negeri Mr. Rapi kita mau student exchange dan sebagainya tidak bisa dan akhirnya salah satu implementasi untuk inisiasi kerjasama dengan luar negeri diantaranya kita melakukan webinar bersama seperti ini ya kemudian kredit transfer kurikulum ya sharing mata kuliah kemudian sharing knowledge session mungkin bisa seperti itu Kemudian seminar internasional bersama, uh, guest lecture online karena memang kita susah untuk datang saling berkunjung. Uh, kemudian English training online, kemungkinan bisa juga itu dari India ya. Dan yang terakhir bisa juga faculty development online dan tentu um, kegiatan ini adalah yang pertama kali mencetuskan memang dari DPP Api Kampusat sehingga nanti selanjutnya yang bisa mendapatkan uh, value-nya adalah para kampus-kampus uh, di mana Aptikom melakukan kerjasama anggotanya otomatis ikut uh, bisa ikut uh, melakukan kerjasama seperti ini. Tentu berikutnya bisa dengan kampus mana, kampus mana, kampus mana. Kita dari DPP Aptikom uh, hanya mendobrak aja membuka modelnya seperti ini. Dan uh, ini ya memang uh, merupakan implementasi pertama dan sel- uh, merupakan hasil dari kegiatan Aptikom Goes to India yang kebetulan ini yang terakhir kalinya barangkali kemarin um, di bulan Februari ya tanggal 9 sampai 15 ya ini yang dulu uh, bisa uh, terjadi kemarin kalau tidak terjadi mungkin tidak bisa juga karena kesini-sini sudah lockdown seperti itu. 
Dan inilah salah satu persembahan dari Aptikom hmm. untuk meningkatkan kualitas para anggotanya tentunya, dan salah satunya melalui webinar internasional ini. Dan tentu ke depan akan ada juga webinar internasional with Japan, with Uzbekistan, Korea, dan lain sebagainya. Dengan Belanda, mungkin karena kita sebelumnya sudah banyak sekali MOU-MOU yang sudah berjalan dengan beberapa negara, namun implementasinya belum. Dan untuk India, PIC-nya ada Mr. Rafi. Thank you Mr. Rafi for help us ya Terus untuk sama. kegiatan ya. kerjasama ini sehingga bisa running well lah kira-kira satu-satu karena kan tidak bisa langsung dan tentu pendekatannya adalah dengan kampus-kampus. Bagi kampus-kampus yang berkenan ingin implementasi dan arahan dari DPP, tim kita ada Pak Eri, ada Pak Wendy yang sudah mahir dan sudah sering implementasikannya di kampus-kampus. Kita juga bisa minta bantuan yang lainnya. Tapi timnya adalah itu uh, Pak Eri di bidang kerjasama, Pak Wendy Internasional Collaboration-nya, dan uh, kita adalah satu tim dari DPP sesuai uh, arahan dari Pak Ketum untuk membantu para anggotanya untuk lebih keren lagi. Demikian, Mr. Rapi. Thank you so much. <tuh> Ya, thank you so much Ibu Nina. Ya. Thank you so much. Jadi uh, Bapak Ibu kalau kalau boleh disimpulan tentang acara yang Delivering Education Online International Best Practices Bapak Ibu, uh, ya yeah, we understand itu kan these are extraordinary times Bapak Ibu ini kan COVID-19 ada satu hal yang mungkin uh, we as humans kita enggak dipikirkan ada kemungkinan seperti ini Bapak Ibu. Tapi uh, seperti Prof Zainal juga disampaikan every crisis does op offer opportunities. Opportunities ada banyak ya Bapak Ibu, jadi ini kan ada opportunities, jadi mungkin Bapak Ibu semuanya yang hadir hari ini, ya mungkin ini ada hal yang kita harus be flexible, we have to be adaptable, dan juga ini ada kemungkinan pakai teknologi, kita bisa sampaikan ke tempat-tempat yang sebelumnya kita pikir banyak hal, tapi sekarang karena situasi ini yang memang perlu kita harus act, let's do it as Prof. Zainal had mentioned, Artinya ini adalah kesempatan untuk Bapak Ibu, jadi kita bisa diimplementasikan. And uh, kita ada beberapa tool, we have a lot of options. Uh, kita ada uh, salah satu option seperti Prof. Vikram did mention also about Alive. Maybe itu juga kita harus dilihat itu caranya gimana ya Bapak Ibu. So I think ini uh, sebenarnya uh, Bapak Ibu ini adalah semangat. Harusnya kita harus semangat. Ya walaupun ada situasi seperti ini, ya we have to do it. We have to be positive. And saya yakin ini kan salah satu... Uh, sesi pertama yang kita dilakukan uh, tapi Bapak Ibu hmm. yang yang dari Indonesia yang ingin kerjasama uh, seperti tadi yang uh, udah disampaikan dari uh, Dr. Wendy, dari Pak Eri dan juga Ibu Nina uh, the team Apticom udah siap they are more than happy to uh, explore collaborative links with India and with many other countries around the world ya yeah, jadi uh, sebelum kita tutup uh, terima kasih banyak uh, 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 terima kasih banyak sekali to Prof. Zainal Uh, terima kasih banyak Bapak uh, Prof untuk kesempatan ini jadi yang sesi ini yang delivering education online kita bisa diimplementasikan. Uh, thank you so much Prof Vikram uh, for sharing your valuable inputs and I'm getting a lot of queries um, you know which you are not able to see but they would require uh, they would request a copy of your powerpoint. Uh, so Prof Vikram please if you don't mind you could share a copy of your powerpoint. Thank sure, you. Sir. Yeah. Also uh, thank you so much for all the Apticom team members. Bapak Ibu, ini yang acara yang ini yang kelihatannya yang gampang sebenarnya ada banyak planning. There's a lot of things going on di behind. Jadi uh, terima kasih banyak ke, ke tim uh, Apticom, uh, Pak Solihin, Ibu Nina, Pak Ari, Dr. Wendy, uh, Ibu Hani, banyak Bapak Ibu ada banyak orangnya. Jadi minta maaf kalau nggak bisa tersebut satu-satu. Uh, so thank you so much. Terima kasih banyak sekali juga untuk yang peserta-peserta yang datang dari Uh, 33 provinsi dari Indonesia dan juga ada peserta dari France, dari Morocco, uh, juga ada dari India dan juga Turkey, right? So thank you everyone, uh, Bapak Ibu. Uh, sebelum the last thing is I think adalah sesi foto, group foto ya Bapak Ibu. Jadi saya minta Bapak Ibu tolong dinyalain yang uh, to please activate your camera so that we can take a good photos. Uh, that that's a very uh, It's a very Asian culture ya Bapak Ibu, so let's remain to the culture irrespective ada situasi COVID, culture kita nggak di, uh, dilupakan. So may I request uh, Bapak Ibu to please uh, activate your cameras. Yep. Thank Pak you. Chandra, 
Pak Chandra Lukita, Bu hmm, Peggy, ya. Bu Sekti. Ayo, Bu Dija, cantik. Ayo, Mana Lukin. fotonya? Wah, ah, Bu Dija hijau. Ya, ya. Pak Sonya. Udah, siapa fotonya? Belum bisa di Videonya ke Protek. Oh, Protek. Kang, Kang, Kang Ferry, tolong dibuka, Kang Ferry. Kang Ferry, tolong dibuka. Di host. Kang Ferry, host, ya. tolong dibuka, Kang Ferry. Kang Ferry, tolong dibuka kameranya untuk semuanya. Kang Ferry. Pak Solikin hmm. belum dibuka, nih. Nggak bisa, Pak Eri. Masih diprotek. Diprotek. Iya. Karena nah, mungkin biar nih. tidak berat. Nah. Ini bisa, nih. Ini bisa, nih. Ibu Rosi ikut dari Papua. Juga Ibu Rosi ikut. Ibu ada Rosi di... Mana? <laughs> Tadi Bu Rosi udah lapse. Hmm. Pak Chandra itu mau buka, kelihatannya nggak bisa itu. Iya, masih diprotek. Pak, Pak Chandra, Tidak bisa semua. Pak Ali, Dr. Septi, Bu Fegi. Kang, solidkin ya. backgroundnya itu kabur tuh, karena nggak solid background. <laughs> okay, Wajahnya. Siap. siap, siap. Bentar, <laughs> visible man. <laughs> Saya bentar, lagi bentar. di Yuki, uh, Prof. Ucok ini fotonya ingat nggak dulu sama-sama waktu yeah. ke sana. Tadi okay. akarnya, akarnya, akarnya. Ya. Siapa nih yang ngontrol? Mungkin tim admin silakan di foto tim admin mm -hmm. yang jago-jago di kamera, Prof. <laughs> belum bisa ya. masuk, Pak. Ya, Ibu bisa. Peggy, aku belum bisa masuk itu. <laughs> Peggy aktifasi kamera. Prof. Ayo dong dihitung siapa nih teh? Siapa yang foto? Ya, ya saya foto ini tapi dikit-dikit. Ya dihitung dihitung satu dua tiga gitu cepat oh. yuk boleh cepat. Ya mungkin saya ya. hitung bapak ya. ibu satu. Ya. satu dua tiga smile. Ya satu lagi bapak ibu satu ya. dua tiga. Sip. Oke, okay. jadi terima kasih okay. banyak semuanya. Terima kasih, yeah. thank you so much. Terima kasih, terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Prof. Fikram, Pak Kram, Pak Kram. Ya, semuanya. Pak Ucok, Pak Ucok, Pak Rekor, Pak Daina, Pak Chandra, Bu Fegi, Pak Uros, Pak Dwiza, Pak Daina. Terima kasih, terima kasih banyak. Terima kasih, terima kasih. Terima kasih, semuanya. Thank you so much, Prof. Fikram. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Prof. Fikram. Thank you, Prof. Fikram. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Nice time, man. Nice to meet you all. Thank you. 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 Thank Laptopnya, laptopnya nih, laptopnya jahat ini. Wah, kok jahat? Bagus ya. Laptopnya jahat tuh kan bohong. Oke, terima kasih Bu Nina. Ya, kasih Bu Nina. Terima Pak Solikin. Ya, sama-sama Pak. Terima kasih Pak Ferry. Terima kasih. Semuanya. Terima kasih.